Uh, we've got eight missions to deal with, and just going from out to in, uh, we've got an Ares Pod G in a very high orbit, but it really can't land on Mars. It doesn't have enough delta V, just short, really. Um, 3,948, that's enough to land, but it's not enough to take off again. So uh, it's also out of plane with everything else. So we're, we're just going to leave it be for now. And uh, perhaps we'll correct its inclination eventually and then bring it to something. But maybe we'll wait until we know what needs it and then... Uh, have it become active. But beyond that, we have a light lander and a UDMH depot. So my plan is to rendezvous the UDMH depot with this light lander and then bring them down to the altitude of our station, which is right around there. Um, Mars port one there. So, uh, well, I won't uh, select it right now, but it's down here. And so we need to bring them down. And that light lander can then help us land on Phobos and Deimos. We don't want to use its fuel because it will need that fuel to land on Phobos and Deimos. We'll just use the fuel from the UDMH depot in order to do all of its maneuvers and dock with the station. And so we can't use the other light lander because it's technically defunct, it's suborbital and can't be saved. And it's not one of the eight missions that I've counted. So. Those are the top three. And then Ares Pod A, I'm going to actually handle first. And we're going to continue air breaking it down to the level of the station. And the station is going to actually use its fuel to rendezvous with this Ares Pod G, which can land on the surface of Mars. It has 4, 000, almost 4,700 meters per second. And that'll be enough to land and launch back into orbit again. But we don't want to use any of its fuel, really, uh, to do that. Uh, so we'll use the spare fuel from Mars uh, Port 1 to get to it. Mars Base 1 down here has to land on the surface, and we'll just uh, take care of that. We're not going to correct any inclinations just yet, by the way, even though we're not quite in the plane of Phobos and Deimos right now. We're close enough, and uh, the higher-up missions can obviously correct their planes easier. We're probably going to... Uh, with whatever mission needs to get to Phobos and Deimos, boost high first, go to Deimos first and uh, correct inclination up at Deimos level and then after landing on Deimos go to Phobos is probably the order of things. So Ares Pod A is going to air break down and then we have in the middle here a light lander that we can't use but also a spare UDMH depot and the UDMH depot that's in this orbit right here is just gonna be left there. Uh, for now we'll just have it as backup we won't use any of its fuel uh, it will take. It has like 7,200 meters per second on its own, but of course it's meant to tug other stuff. And it would take 466 meters per second to get down to the station's orbit right now. It could also uh, go down to the station and go back up again to date most or Phobos or anything like that. It's got a lot of delta V, so it's flexible and can potentially refuel Ares Pod A if necessary, but I don't think Ares Pod A needs to be refueled. But... Anyway, for now, the first thing I'm going to do is air break Ares Pod A uh, down to the lower level. And I'll come back to you once all that is done because I don't want to bother you with all the air breaking passes. We'll take it down to a periapsis of 70 kilometers, which we saw was safe. Okay, there haven't been any problems and I've reduced the orbit of the Ares Pod A to an apoapsis of 5,915 kilometers and a periapsis outside the atmosphere now, so an orbital period of 4 hours and 18 minutes. This is as low as I felt I could go without the electric charge diminishing, so I'm just going to take it around for an orbit and see that we don't end up depleting all the electric charge. So we can see it replenishing. You can see it was pretty close to a completely depleting there. So I didn't want to... Ooh, very close. It's very close to the atmosphere, but no, this time it is going to deplete a bit. So definitely I can't bring in any lower. We're, we're going to rendezvous the station to it and the station can fully recharge it. And when it departs the station, it should be, you know, when they return home to Earth. This is all this vehicle is, is an Earth return vehicle. Okay, well, we're, we've got some work to do. So... 
Time to focus on Marsport 1, which is going to rendezvous with Ares Pod G. Okay, so here we are with Marsport 1, and just in case the whole concept of rendezvousing the station with the pod sounded weird, just remember that it's not really that big a station. Uh, it's really just one module. It's still 32 tons, but that does include the heat shield, which we currently still have, and that's because we've got these tanks and these engines still attached to that heat shield. Well, really attached to the, the decoupler for the heat shield, not the heat shield itself, but um, yeah. Uh, we're eventually going to have to dump that, but not before we rendezvous with stuff. We could probably hang on to it or right through the rendezvous with Ares Pod A. Right now we're just trying to get to Ares Pod G, which is the lower one. And it is... it'll take about 100 meters per second or so. We've got it plotted out so that we have a separation of 2.9 kilometers in 14 hours. And I'm taking things easy, we're just going to take our time with everything. So the first node's in 6 hours. And that'll mainly be an inclination change higher up. It occurs to me that this might be a little bit imbalanced with Ares Pod G on though. Because Ares Pod G just has a propellant only docking port. It's going to make things somewhat difficult. It makes me think we should go for Ares Pod A first, but we actually want to end up at Ares Pod A's orbit. So yeah, it's going to be an awkward assembly that tries to get itself to Ares Pod A. Okay, closest approach distance now, just 2.4 meters. We are approaching, pointing with this docking port. I'm hoping that there's not going to be any problem keeping the solar panels out. But you never know. It's got its own solar panels out too. So it's sort of a jumble. Let's see. Maybe... This should retract its solar panel. It's not really pointing at the target, come on. Ooh, it is all very tight, but okay. Oh, there we go. All right, well, it's all docked together. Well, this part anyway. Now, we got to get Ares Pod A onto all of it. Yeah, I think this is just going to be a painful experience if we try and use this to do the rendezvous. So, I think we'll just use the fuel from Ares Pod A. I don't know. Maybe we can figure out a way to do this burn. I, I do want to get rid of this fuel here. We've already topped off the Ares Pod G. We topped off the other tank here. So, I don't want to abandon this fuel. Oh, this is also a propellant only docking port. Well, that's going to make this whole assembly rather unfortunate looking. I think I've got too many Apollo docking ports here. Not enough uh, propellant only docking ports on the actual station. Now two Kerbals, Philippe and, or I think Philippe and Newcast are both pilots. And I think my current plan is one of them is going to land on Phobos and Deimos and the other is going to land on Mars. And so we'll divide up the responsibilities like that and thereby not risk both Kerbals at the same time. We might end up killing both of them, but still, uh, we won't be risking both of them at the same time. Okay, we do have a close approach distance of 45 meters now. We are already 1.2 kilometers away from the target and we still have the fuel that we need to get home. So that is good. And just a reminder, the spaceport, the Mars port, had food, water, and oxygen all on its own. So we're going to have a much better life support situation. Not that we were in any sort of trouble. Uh, the life support that we have in here was ready enough to cover the entire time through the whole Mars stay and the journey back home. But more margin is always helpful. So anyway... We continue on approach, looks like seven minutes to the target, and let's have the target turn the right docking port. Though we are running out of the correct type of docking port here. And hopefully, once everything is connected, we'll have enough electric charge generation. We'll certainly have solar panels poking out everywhere, all over the place. Solar panels for days. Good thing I retracted the solar panels. There's no way they would have survived correctly. 
and then we would have been in big trouble. Solar panels aren't all the solar panels that are necessary to return home. It's not an option. Okay, find a docking port, please. I, I approached it a little bit too quickly. Okay, there we go. All right, so which solar panels would be safe to extend? I think this one is good. Yep. And this one. And yes, the ones on Aries Pod A are much smaller than the ones on the station. Station has really big panels. There's no a downside to extending all the panels you have, so or can extend without hitting something, so I am going to do that. I think I'll leave the top three not extended. And now we have a lot of electric charge, but is it enough? Let's just verify. We don't have the sun out right now, so it's draining. And how much life support do we have? Now we have two years and 300 days for the two crew. So there's a whole year's worth on board here. Okay, so with the UDMH depot, I applied out uh, inclination correction here. And then another burn at periapsis in order to rendezvous with the target, hopefully. And so first we need to do this 42 meter per second burn. As you can see, the UDMH depot has lots of docking ports. So one propellant only there. The important one is the Apollo docking system, of course, because that's the only one we have left on the actual station. All the rest are propellant only docking ports, so my hope is that the light lander has a propellant only one, though it could occupy one of the many Apollo docking ports on the station once we get there, so either way it'll be fine thanks to the fact that we have so many docking ports on this. It will expand the station in a very constructive way. Well, this is a propellant only docking port, of course. Now this causes a bit of a problem in that our engines are going to be facing the lander, so that's not great. I wanted to use this as a tug. And one way or another, the light lander needs this in order to dock to the station, because it's not going to be able to dock on its own, because there's no docking board free for it. Okay, we have a docking. Okay, let's arrange some of this stuff. So, again, we want to fill up the tanks here. Let me shut them down because we want to conserve that fuel. And as much as as distasteful as it is, I'm going to try and use these engines in order to bring it to a lower altitude. We're currently close to periapsis here. Okay, 2,800 meters per second, but still quite a lot. Quite a lot. We'll leave this one unlocked so those RCS can help us out. All right, let's test if we can use these these uh, S5.92 engines in order to do the retro. Oh, I left two engines on here. Shut that down. Shut that down. Okay. Okay, mm ignition. Uh... It doesn't seem to be changing our orbit at all. It seems like it's obstructed. Which makes sense, so we can't get away with that. We won't dock this to Mars Port 1 just yet. At least we've got two these two missions together. So basically our main missions are in two clumps. The station clump and this clump. And we've got a spare Ares Pod G in a high orbit, but that can't actually land. And we've got a spare UDMH depot for emergencies and we've kept it to an orbit that's somewhere between Phobos and Deimos as far as its apoapsis. So that is the situation there and now I want to see about landing Mars Base 1 somewhere. And it's gonna be super important coming up soon here. We're at 10 kilometers and still going more than a thousand three hundred meters per second. Gonna switch to SAS. Okay, drogue shoots are holding. That's good. 800 meters per second. 700, 600, 5 kilometers above the surface. 
500 meters per second, 4 kilometers above the surface, main shoots, and full deployment of the drogue shoots, 300 meters per second, 3 kilometers above the surface, 2 kilometers above the surface, 170 meters per second, full deployment of the main shoots, and separation of the heat shield. Hopefully it won't come back, hopefully it won't come back. Okay, we've got landing legs. I'm gonna take off SAS as the parachutes right us. Horizontal speed three meters, two meters. Heat shield has crashed one meter. And that's good. Thrust. Oh, I might be too late on that. I might be too late. Oh! bad news. Might be good, might be good. Ow! Oh, it's gone sideways as usual. Hmm. Well, I could work on the landings, obviously. And we don't have magical reaction wheels to get this upright again. Will it repower itself if I extend this solar panel? Let's see. Well, even like this, it's not recharging, so it's not a good base. Okay, well it occurs to me that this light lander and UDMH depot are going to take quite a long time to get to our station. And another realization is that maybe I shouldn't have separated off the heat shield. Because uh, they could actually air break in the atmosphere together. And could have done multiple passes like that. On the other hand, let's see if we can refuel this portion with the station. If so we should bring them into the station separately. So we see uh, 3,557 units of aerosene here. And the NTO will just go with that because the station also uses the Gemini Lander engines. So let me just switch to the station. 3,557 is what we're, I mean, we probably don't need to f uh, fill up the whole thing. We just need uh, part of that. Okay, well, it took a while to load up. Okay, so the station has, well, it has 4,000 here. So, yeah, actually, uh, and it has the, this extra fuel down here, too. So, the station could refuel that light lander on its own. So, let's just bring the light lander and the UDMH depot down separately. So, we sort of wasted the fuel used to rendezvous the two, but um, on, on second thought, it seems like this would be a better sort of solution. Now we do need the UDMH depot here in order to dock the light lander because this does not have the right docking port. So the first thing we need to do is bring the UDMH depot down here and then the second thing we need to do is bring the light lander in but we could probably do both at the same time. So let me work on doing the plots for that and we'll undock the two and bring them in that way. That'll be quicker. Timing seems to be a bit off here. Yep, a little bit late on this one. Let's see... I don't think that that solar panel on Ares Pod A is going to cause problems, but... We should probably pay attention to that. We will retract that and just use the panel... Well, one of the panels on here. I think the other one might hit that panel over on Ares Pod G, so... Probably shouldn't do that. Okay, we seem to be all right for docking. And we've docked. Okay, so yes, in lieu of this very important panel, of course that panel is necessary for the return home. Let's just not have that out. And instead use one of these. Okay, so Aries, uh, sorry, Light Lander is still on approach, and we're making good time here, so that's nice. Okay, we're now approaching, but it's a little bit complicated to see where the heck everything is. I think I'm going for right about there. So let's slow down here. Okay, approaching to dock. And maybe after filling up this tank, we can get rid of that heat shield down there, because then we'll have used up the fuel in these tanks down here. 
and we've docked. All right, well, that's the complete assemblage. That's all the things that uh, we needed without duplicates to uh, conduct our mission. We've got the Ares Pod A, the Ares Pod G, the UDMH Depot, the Lunar Lander, and the station. I'm somewhat pleased by this, <laughs> at least. Of course, there was the surface base, but that was never meant to join up with anything. All of this had to join up uh, for the sake of the crewed mission. I think I'll start off with the mission of the lunar, uh, the light lander because that's a little bit easier and I'll build up the suspense for the Ares Pod G which may or may not meet an untimely demise. We'll, we'll find out. Okay, now for a move that may throw things off a bit, but we're going to dump the heat shield off of this. So, jettison? Oh, okay, that's not quite what I wanted. Uh, decouple node. Oh, so not quite what I wanted, but uh, all right. Let's uh, no, no, uh, uh, that's off actually. Um, control from here and back away from that, please. I think we are going to have Philippe try to set foot on Mars, and we'll have Newcast do Phobos and Deimos. So let me transfer. Uh, let me just use the stock transfer, I think. Okay, Newcast has been moved to Mark 1 lander can advanced. And we have topped off the fuel there. It's got all its supplies. Well, we get to enjoy this unified assemblage for a brief moment. And now we're going to decouple. I've got that topped off. And these are awaiting the need for them. Now, just on this, we have 1,746. So it occurs to me that maybe we should go for Deimos first, because it's going to take more Delta V than Phobos does. And I think that's going to be the plan. Oh, well, that's pretty darn good timing, actually. Uh, how much does that cost? About 500, let's say. Okay, well, let's use Maneuver Node Editor. It looks like we could probably get a little bit closer like that. Well, there we have a Deimos encounter. We're going to have to be very careful about it. You know how Deimos and Phobos are. They're not exactly the easiest things to deal with, but I think we've got a pretty quick deal here and we've got 60 days worth of supplies in this lander so that's not a problem. Okay well we have a Deimos encounter but it's one of those things where we're only gonna be in the SOI for two minutes so but then again actually we do have enough um, thrust to make sure that we can match orbits with Deimos in two minutes so Actually, it wouldn't be a problem to do the entire burn in there, but it might be better if we do some of the burn ahead of time. Relative velocity is 800 meters per second, which we can easily manage with our current stage. Okay, even though we're outside of the SOI, we can go negative relative velocity. We have a reaction wheel, but it's very weak. There's Deimos. We may have to make sure we don't damage it with our thrusters. <laughs> ah, the wonderful little zigzag orbit that occurs when you're approaching something like Deimos or a small planet. Sometimes a uh, small moon. Sometimes it occurs with the larger ones too. But. Okay, I think we are low enough on the relative velocity that it's more efficient to wait. Uh, you can see the gap between our orbits. I mean, we can't match orbits with it right now, not until we're actually in the SOI anyway. So. It'll be sort of a real burn if we keep doing this. Now, of course, the Kerbal could just EVA down to the surface. That's one thing. But I do want to get the goo from the surface. I feel like that would be a good thing. Okay, just hold it right there. I'm somewhat disappointed by it looking like this. 
It's too regular. Okay, 16 by 7. I guess that's good enough. We've got 400 meters per second left, which is tons more than we need, but fortunately, we can just land on RCS. Okay, I think we should affect our first landing here. So, SAS on. Literally just dealing with a handful of millimeters per second of horizontal speed. We are technically at escape velocity if we weren't crashing into the surface. Oh, I just noticed that the surface altitude is creeping up on me. Uh, I was looking at that altitude and that's that the surface is... Okay, I better turn caps lock off. <laughs> better turn caps lock off here. It really snuck up on me. Oh, well, it's not a flat surface right now, but... I'm guessing that should be all right. There we go. Oh uh, no. Um, let's have the reaction wheel sort of. I don't know. Is this considered landed? I wish we had brakes. Um, maybe caps off on and RCS can solve this situation. Okay, that's pretty good. RCS off. We've got it down to maybe 10 millimeters per second. That's pretty good. That'll be good enough to get the Kerbal out. Uh, first of all, crew report uh, from Deimos' Highlands. Uh, we can transmit. Okay, be careful, Newcast. Take surface sample. Keep. Contingency sample, or whatever you want to call it. Um, EVA report. Keep. That's a lot of science. Okay, plant a flag. Pot is slightly drifting away, I think. Okay, new cast. Whoa, no, the flag is going away. Oh, wait, I've got caps lock on because of. Okay, new cast on Deimos. I don't care if it's flying away. Where did the flag go? Flag go. Yeah. Yeah, it's just doing its own thing. Okay. Uh, let's get the pack on. Board. Okay, well, the question is whether we can find some other place to land, except for the highlands. Oh. I just heard an explosion and an impact got recorded even though the thing recording the impact is not no longer on the surface I don't know what exploded might have been the flag yeah I don't know what made the explosion sound let me have three new casts on Deimos crashed into Deimos aha uh -huh. yeah it was the flag our flag crashed into Deimos and recorded an impact. Just seven millimeters per second horizontal. Okay, actually plant plant us into the surface, please. And SAS off. Uh, SAS on now. Micro, micrometers, mic microns, wow. Down to microns even. Okay, we're tilted in a weird way, but that's how the slope is. Crew report. Uh, transmit. Uh, I guess we should collect impact data from here because we're gonna plant a flag soon. Uh, transmit that. Let's get a safe distance away from the pod. Okay, we are standing. Uh, take surface sample. Keep. EV report. Keep. Plant a flag. Let's see if this works better. New cast at Deimos Lowlands. Well, this one go flying off too. 
Don't know. Okay. Well, it looks like it's actually pretty steady. So this one might stick. No, oh, craters. Hold on. Deimos' craters. Alright, alright. Isn't it just all one big crater? I mean... Seem pretty much full of craters to me, but hey, another biome, I'm not gonna argue. Okay, that's good enough. Less than my 10 millimeter per second limit. Okay, once again. Crew report. Transmit. I think I'm not gonna have him plant a flag this time. Just take the surface sample. Excellent, excellent work, Newcast. So, I just want to get Newcast back into orbit in preparation for transferring to Phobos. And so I'm going to go east now. Okay, an apoapsis of close to 10 kilometers. Was I concerned that landing at the pole might cause bad things to happen because of that spike? Perhaps. The mysteries of the spike will have to wait for another day. Look how fast Deimos is going away. Okay, off goes that tank. I don't know why the node is not still here, but alright. I guess we'll just do that outside of the Amos SOI. Okay, so that's that, and then we'll have an inclination correction here. And that'll cost 60 meters per second to match inclinations, that's not bad. Okay, 0.13 to 0.14 degrees is the best we can do right now. Well, that's a pretty close approach. Let's just try and finagle that then. That'll be in four days, but we've actually got time. I mean, UCAS can survive for 60 days in this pod. Okay, well, there's a Phobos periapsis for now. Okay, well, we have a very low relative velocity to it, but what are we going to do with that exactly? Well, the closest approach distance is changing even though I'm not applying any thrust. Okay, time warp settles it down, that's good. Um, well, we are definitely in Phobos SOI because 39 kilometers. Let's just quickly go orbit retrograde. RCS on now. Where's Phobos? Pretty close to it. There it is. Okay. We are in orbit around Phobos at long last. Very smooth. Yep, yeah, there we go. Wow, it's firmly planted too. It doesn't... Well, I don't know. Let's just double check that. Maybe it was trying to float off. Okay. So, uh, well, let's get the crew report. Transmit. Get the sciences. All right, so EVA report, keep. Surface sample, keep. Plant a flag. Oop, he hopped a bit. New cast at Phobos Lowlands. I think we'll just leave it at that. Okay. Let's transmit that EVA report and keep the rest. Okay, how's our science? 3,000 now. Okay, so let's go up. <clears throat> let's go up. Minor craters. Grooves? Grooves? Grooves sound groovy. I was not expecting grooves. Okay, I'm just gonna have RCS push us towards the surface, of course. Well, just before we hit the grooves, it also said craters. So there's another biome just nearby. Newcast could probably walk there. But we also want all the other instruments. Yeah, we're just 748 meters away from the lowlands. Now, well, groove does imply a sort of slope, doesn't it? Sort of plant ourselves on here. Push down, push down, push down. 
No, no, don't go too far. You may depart from the groove. No, 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 no. Down, down, down. Stay in the groove. Take surface sample. Yes, groove. And EV report and plant a flag. New casts in the groove. Groovy. I mean, come on, right? Okay, so the thing is, let's see if we can't just EVA. Well, we should store our EVA thing anyway. Maybe we should just have the ladder hop. Landing again is a pain, but it'll give us all the sciences, so. Well, I thought the craters were in this direction, but it's not giving me craters, it's just stuck on grooves. And let's stick ourselves to it. Okay, good. Temperature, yes. New. Oral perturbation is good. Pressure data, also good. And it is time to step outside. I'm not going to plant another flag. We've already got two flags within less than a kilometer of each other. It might be pushing it. I don't have anything funny to say about minor craters. So we're keeping that and keeping that. Well, that's that's a lot. Um, we're almost at 4,000. Let's lift off again. Okay, touchdown. Let's plant ourselves into the surface. Looks stable to me. And Phobos is Midlands confirmed. Let's see, Geiger Mueller tube is good. Gravity scan confirmed. And pressure data confirmed. And finally, crew report. This is pretty mountainous for a uh, Midland but okay well let's let's get out of Phobos before it does weirder things I think we're pressing our luck here I've got four biomes I ought to be satisfied with that let's try and get Newcast back to the station now do we have some fuel in order to do more biome hopping at Phobos? Sure I mean, it doesn't take that much to get from one biome to another on Phobos, but I think I want to resolve this. I mean, it's getting worse. I swear it's dropping further and further away. Um, yeah, I, I, that just worries the heck out of me, so I, I don't want to take any more chances. Okay, we're at 40 degrees north. Um, let's go east, and our inclination should be, well, it should be about 41 degrees, right? We want to be higher than that on the apoapsis. Um, I think the flag just got destroyed. We didn't record any per uh, impact data, darn it. Okay, that's five kilometers all the way around, which will keep us in 10x time warp territory. Uh huh. Well, okay. Trying to figure out how to get back to the station. Um, maybe we should just break orbit first and then worry about it. Um, the other option is to wait until Phobos is right there and then break orbit and bring our orbit down. You know, that's, that's a possibility, but Phobos's gravity isn't that much and we might as well just go ahead and break orbit now. And off we go. We are getting away before things go horribly wrong. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Phew. But Phobos is all the way back. I mean, it's just, it just throws me off. Phobos is, Phobos is there now. It's progressively going further and further away. I thought it was supposed to, uh, you know, break up, um, get closer to Mars and break up, not get shot off like that. Anyway, no complaints, no complaints. We can uh, get back to Mars port. Uh, let, let's just keep an eye on what Phobos is doing. Take a look. Uh, 
Where, where, what does it think it is exactly? What are you, Phobos? <laughs> it's going up and down. This is not right. This is so not right. I feel like I should restart the game, but it's just too funny. Okay, well, I've reloaded and Phobos is in the right place, at least in the tracking station, so that's good. Let's jump back to the Light Lander and UCAS and see what we can do. And hopefully the maneuver node isn't constantly changing on us. Okay, well, yeah, it's holding stable now. If we take a look at what we've got here, we've got 735.3 meters per second and then a relative speed of, let's say, 90 which means those sum up to 825 which is something that we have we have that amount so let's let's try it let's try it let's hope that those numbers are all correct okay yeah I'm not thrilled with the margins here um, we've got 103 meters per second and it's looking like 89 meters per second is what we have to kill off. Now we've got five seconds of burn time. We do have throttling engines. The Gemini Lander engines do throttle down to 10%. So we can do this with reasonable precision. But after that, we've only got 14 meters, 13 meters per second, really. I wonder if pur purging our waste would help. But I can't actually bring up the ship manifest window for some reason. Okay, relative velocity is minimal. And I want to point at target, actually. It has sort of spun us a little bit awry. You can see the tiny bit of fuel we have. Erizine, 4 units out of 1,379. NTO, 2.93 units out of 1,368. We are definitely going to have Marsport turn so that one of the docking ports is facing us. We are not going to do any complicated maneuvers. We're going to try and glide straight in kind of thing. Could just dock it on the tail here. Okay, we look reasonably in line, but it's still saying close approach distance 98 meters. I'm going to turn Smart ASS off and just have it hold that position for now. Now, in real life, not all the fuel in the tank is usable. There, Some of it just sort of sits at the bottom and doesn't flow properly. Residuals, they're called. And some of them just sort of end up in the chamber and are unusable, but we don't have to worry about that here. Every drop is potentially usable here as long as the fuel mixture is fine. Actually, we'll probably end up with too much erosine at the end of the day. Two meters per second left, and we docked. Well, can't get more precise than that, I suppose. Philippe and UCAS are back together again. We successfully handled our Phobos missions. We are going to transfer Philippe over to the Lunapod. Not Lunapod, Ares Pod. I suppose we should check what we have as far as total Delta V here and how much we really should unlock. You can see that we need to get rid of the heat shield before we can use the engines, so that's a little bit of a trouble. 4,719. And I would expect that we need 4,200 to get back to orbit. So we can leave unlocked 500, let's say. So the locked fuel will be required to return to orbit. The first thing we're going to do though is do some aero braking passes to bring our orbit down. We're pretty high up here. And so we're just going to dip slightly into the atmosphere to bring our orbit down. And also we want to make sure that we get close to our pre-existing base here. And obviously right now we're not at the right time for that. And we need to figure out the timing for that properly. Our electric charge is really low. I should have filled it up before leaving. Well, there's no way this will hold out for the necessary amount of time. We're going to have to dock back right now. And I guess that's because of the extra electric charge required by the Kerbal. So what I'm figuring is actually using the little lander, the light lander, and what fuel we can put into it.
to tug this on down. Okay, well we're back on. First thing we need to do is let's transfer some electric charge over. Let's try it. Let me temporarily lock this fuel again. Oh, yeah, well that does have a reaction wheel so that'll be fine for now. Well, I sure didn't expect to face a problem this early on. But we did know that we had various power problems, though actually uh, the most severe power problem was with the other light lander, which only had one solar panel because of a symmetry issue. Of course, even if we could use KES to do something, it occurs to me that neither of our crew members are actually engineers. They're both pilots. Okay, they are connected. Our power situation is not great, but let's reverse it uh, so that the solar panels aren't being covered by the heat shield and see what happens then. So, turning around. Our total electric charge at least is a lot better. I don't know how much time that gives us, let me calculate. Maybe I should estimate one, a draw of one per second. We've got 80,000. Well, it's 22.2 uh, hours, so not a whole lot of time. Our orbital period is 4 hours, though, so it's conceivable. But then on the, on the lander itself, we will only have, assuming a draw of 1 per second, we will have um, 4 hours. And let's check out if the Gina powers down during time warp. Um, well, we're 10x, so it's halfway powered down. Uh, uh, yeah, it powers down to 10 watts, so that's good. It looks like they have 800 meters per second to work with, with the uh, Aries Pod G in tow. Given our power situation, I'm not going to attempt to land at the base. We'll use some of the light lander's fuel in order to bring us into a lower orbit after we pass through the atmosphere. We have recharge. We're nearing apoapsis. I will want to bring our periapsis down if possible. We can go to 65 kilometers safely, I'm sure. It might cause complications because we can't use the engines with the heat shield still attached. Well, even 65 didn't really bring us down too much. A little pause there. Um, probably we'll end up at a three hour orbit. But that's that. We will have to land now. Technically, this is actually sort of wrong because the Gemini pods only had uh, fuel cells capable of generating two kilowatts, which means that, and that was with the people in. So if it has a power drain of three kilowatts, because I guess the Kerbal counts as extra, that's more drain than it should have and more drain than the Gemini, uh, the real Gemini capsules could allow with their um, fuel cells. Uh, this unit only takes 200 watts and this one uh, 250 when it's not time warping. So they're not the cause of it. It's an extra kilowatt that this pod should not have as drain. So we're backing away and we're also reducing our periapsis so that's good. Just above lowlands. I like the sound of lowlands. Makes it sound flat. But there's Mount Olympus right there, so I don't know how low it is, but okay. Um, yeah, we're definitely far, far away from Mars Base 1 now. But we're landing around here-ish, north of Mount Olympus. We'll see how that works out for us. And the only reason that we have the heat shield is to produce more drag. Train altitude does not seem that high. About seven kilometers. Oh, no, uh, six kilometers. Okay, well, out of time warp. We're still going pretty fast. I don't know if, like, having a lifting re-entry or something like that would help. Can I actually increase my vertical speed like this? Well, probably the parachutes are just going to snap. But we'll see. I can't use the engines right now because of the heat shield and I can't release the heat shield because it'll just smack right into us. Well something blew up. 
Hold on. A procedural tank failed due to aerodynamic stresses. Really? Um, that tank separated from us because of aerodynamic stress it says I didn't see that one coming uh, snap snap okay well hold on uh, retrograde Here. We're lopsided. Full parachute deployment's too late. Well, I'll give it one more go, and this time we'll do it without the heat shield. But I'm guessing that it's just gonna be a case where Philippe's gonna die. Let's let's try it again. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to uh, toss off the heat shield so that we have a chance to use the engines ahead of time. Probably those little tanks at the bottom will all blow up. We're actually getting some heat effects. Well, there's certainly a different dynamic than with the heat shield, that's for sure. Well, I might have to use some engine power just to keep us from going out of the atmosphere. Well, that's already a lot of delta V used for that purpose. I don't think extending the landing legs is a good idea. They'll probably snap off due to aerodynamic stress or something. Hopefully this situation with us basically going up will allow us to slow down enough for the parachutes, I don't know. Maybe I should unlock the rest of the fuel and in a pinch we'll just strand. We'll, we'll keep the bottom fuel locked. But Felipe will have to, or Felipe will have to prepare to be stranded on Mars. It may happen. Okay, we're headed down. We're not particularly slowing down. So the main chute's at 5,000. 8,000 for the drogue chutes. 23 kilometers, we're sure going fast. Well, I'm just gonna start retroing now. <laughs> 15 kilometers above the terrain. 14. 13, the drogue chutes deploy at 8. 12. 11. 10. 9. Eight. Reaching crew limit, but they, they held, they held. Uh, let's put the landing gear down. Whew. Well, they were reading red, so that's sort of impressive. Uh, we've still got the mains armed, but we're at a good velocity, but I don't know if we're going to have enough Delta V to get back to orbit. So, yeah. 
Well, let me just focus on landing first, because that's got to be tough enough for me to do properly anyway. The moons are out. It doesn't look like the smoothest terrain. And we've only got half our electric charge left. Okay, full parachute deployment. And let's start slowing down. Uh, okay, but well, the victor is going away from us. Okay, okay, no, don't do anything stupid. Okay, okay, we've set down, we're sort of skidding. Well, uh, suspense we should get rid of first. We actually kept all the tanks this time. I don't know about that aerodynamic thing with Jiggy. 3,563. Well, I don't think that's enough to make orbit, really. Because we're also fighting against some gravity. We're sort of skidding over here. I'm going to let it stop skidding before doing anything else. I thought I had put a uh, ladder on here. Dang it. We needed a ladder too. Well, um, it should be fine to extend solar panels, right? Right? It's not going to hit the terrain or anything. I need to give myself some time to think. Yeah, it does not look like uh, we've got a ladder, so our Kerbal can't come out. I'm pretty sure I... Well, I guess that wasn't this version. The Luna Pod was definitely supposed to have land, uh, a ladder, but... Okay, um, well, let's crew report. Um, it shouldn't take too much power. Transmit. Okay. Uh... I just saw something happen over here, but okay. Oh, because the antenna had to extend out. EVA. V report. While flying at Mars. I like it. Keep. Forward. Transmit. Okay, we've stopped moving. Let's see, how about the rest of the science? Atmospheric pressure. We haven't been to Mars Midlands yet. Of course, I'm taking up electric charge, I realize this. What can we do? <laughs> uh, there's there's no way that Philippe could just take stuff off. I, well, I'm thinking about the Martian here, you know, that just grabs stuff off of the thing to uh, kill weight. We could take off the antennae, for instance. There's no need for antennae. Uh, we could... Uh, we could actually move the fuel out of these round ones and dump the round ones. You know, stuff like that. Well, honestly, I think I can leave it as a point of suspense. Will we get Philippe back to orbit?